Welcome to the Beyond Press channel and I am going to probably run this video also on our uh, third channel called Thermal Guys. My first plan was to make all of these videos on there but I don't have the time to run three channels at the moment and these are pretty close to the Beyond the Press channel's other videos so it's quite good idea to run this here. So today's subject is thermal imaging of course and this time we are going to film 3D printer as it's printing and here is the part that we are going to print I made it just for this there is that uh, bottom part of the thing it's like quite big part and there is a lot of filling to be done to make that thing as big as it is and then there is the thin spike on top of that which is going to be a bit harder to make and let's see how it's done and the printer is already a bit warm since I had to change new filament now I'm going to start the print I just choose the file that we did on computer and then the printer starts to heat itself up the table should be 50 degrees Celsius and the actual extruder should be 210 degrees Celsius. And we are using our uh, FLIR T660 camera and it has the lowest temperature range aims at 160 and beginning of that this video is filmed with that and then I use the medium setting on the later parts of the video and with the lower settings you can uh, see the temperature differences in the plastic bit clearer but with the higher temperature you can see the actual extruders temperature and stuff like that that is over 160 and here the machine is doing like first layer it's about uh, 0.2 millimeters thick layers on this job this time and you can see that the glass plate is quite shiny for the thermal radiation so the thermal picture is reflected to the camera so it's like on against mirror mirror with the just regular light And after the machine has uh, done three solid layers, it starts to use, I think I use it about 30% infill, so it's 30% of plastic and 70% of air, and it's a bit like a honeycomb structure, it makes this web layer by layer, and each layer is about 0.2 mm thick. And you can see a bit better now what she's doing because the, this web thing isn't as reflective as like smooth surface for the thermal radiation. And now the machine is doing the uh, top layer of the big part. 
so it's completely plastic this layer not air left in it so it's smooth and solid layer and after this it's going to start building that spike on top of this and the reason that I wanted to print this spike thing here is the fact that really small and high parts are usually quite difficult to print because the time that it takes to make one layer it's really short and the plastic doesn't have time to cool down so sometimes the thing things just get hotter and hotter when it's doing more and more layers really fast there and when that happens then they don't get hard enough and they are like melting or or uh, bending to the shapes that you didn't want to make but uh, I think this software that I'm using uh, like tries to calculate that and avoid that by using slower speed and if you don't have any other means sometimes you have to like make two parts and put them opposite end of the uh, printing area so the machine has to like travel the distance between two parts and then they have to, time to cool down but let's see how it looks on thermal camera this time And here is the finished part. The heat management didn't look that bad on the thermal camera, but the end result on the end of the spike isn't that great. I think I should maybe use uh, smaller layers or put two parts here to get that time to things cool down. Yeah, but there was this time's uh, thermal video and I have Still a lot of these already filmed. I had the camera for about two months and I filmed a lot of stuff when I had it. And my plan is to make one video within every like maybe 10 days to be on press channel about this thermal thing. I think that's about good pace and then I'm going to make one like mayhem or experiment video every week like that red hot steel versus frozen lake stuff and i have already filmed a uh, thermite vs frozen lake so that is coming up soon and then i'm going to make other videos also when i have ideas at the moment i had have much more ideas than i have time to make videos and i i, I think i have to bit concentrate to get ideas done before I start new ideas to get a bit better footage and don't have so many things laying around I think these thermal videos take also really lot of time when editing because to get best result you want to save measurement data not actual video with the thermal camera so I have to like convert those measurements to video with my computer and get the like temperature scales and everything right and that takes quite a lot of time but I think the next one is going to be really interesting I'm going to make video about uh, ice swimming and I have filmed it with thermal camera and I went myself to swim and then I had one guy who had done that long lot of longer time and much more than I am and we like compared our experiences and there was some interesting results yeah but i think that is all for today thank you for watching and have a nice day